Welcome back to another episode of Richmond Real Talk, where you could find real teens, have real talk about real stuff. This is your host, DJ Silver, currently recording here at the Shoreline Teen Center. And today I'm joined with my very own co-worker, Arf. Arf, how you doing? What's up? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, you doing I'm good? honored to be part of this. You know, it's my first time uh, coming back from school, you know, summertime break. I'm ready to do this. What school are you going to, Arf? Central Washington University. Central Washington? How are you liking it? See you. It's nice, but, you know, it's good to be home, though, right now. Yeah, we back in Seattle. We back in Seattle. All right, Elijah and Kelly, y'all are laughing pretty hard. Why don't you go ahead and tell the people who you are? Uh, I'm Elijah behind it. You already know. Meet me at Shorewood. And uh, follow me on the snap. Elijah. (laughs) Okay, stop. Uh, Follow me on the gram at Brahini. I have 500 followers, but... If any of you are listening, <laughs> you can really help out. <laughs> now it's your turn. Um, I'm Callie, and I work for the Rec Center also, and I'm one of the um, youth outreach leaders. And yeah, I am a senior at Shorewood. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Mm-hmm. Just to let you know, I don't know if this is going to be a platform where you're going to get 500 followers on Instagram. I already have 500 followers. Oh, I'm really? Like 40, 50. 40 or 50 more? No, I have, yeah, yeah. Like, I have 540 or 550. I don't know. What were y'all even laughing about? Well, I don't know. When I needed the 10 seconds of I'm silence. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just like, Insta, what? I'll, you have no idea why y'all I'm were laughing. I'm just such a you happy person. I need to laugh at something. Otherwise, it's just boring. You feel me? No, I'm not saying this podcast is boring, but, like... You know, I just need to be you like laugh in the middle of like an interview or something? Like, of what? course not. Like, I just gotta laugh at this. What's so funny about this? Like, what's so? He's it's, nervous. It's awkward <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I think. He's I super think. nervous. Hey, but you gotta, you gotta give me some credit. I didn't laugh during those ten seconds. I, <laughs> I didn't laugh. Oh, I saw your face. It was I, hurting. I didn't laugh loud. I didn't laugh loud. He was trying so hard not to laugh. It looked like you were about to vomit or sneeze. <laughs> I started crying. I'm not gonna he lie. tried so hard not to laugh that his dread started shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. A dread almost fell out. A <laughs> dread almost just fell out. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the first topic of the day, which is the quote of the day, or I should say night, because we're actually recording this here at 11 right now. Anyways, it's a short but sweet one, and I found it. Actually, you know what I found it on? Is I found it on Worldstar. Oh, wow. Now, I went ahead and... Hey, hey. <laughs> I know a world star gets a bad rap. I know why it gets a bad rap. I'm not gonna lie. I used to be really into the fight comps and knockout compilations. I used to watch them endlessly. Who isn't? What's that? I said who isn't. Oh yeah. See, you know, it's still and it still continues. But I will say that following them on Instagram, they actually do put up some inspirational quotes mm-hmm. and some things that kind of are short and sweet and hit kind of hard. One of those things that hit kind of hard that was short and sweet was this quote right here that I have picked out. And it states, sometimes it may look like the hardest battle, but in reality, it's preparing you for massive blessings. Now, for me, this kind of, I saw this maybe about like two, three weeks ago. And there's a lot of things through for me personally that I'm working through that could be overwhelming, but I know it's about to prepare me for something better. So what I wanted to ask the people on this podcast right now is what seems like a hard battle that you're having to go through right now but you know it could probably pay off in the future honestly that's hard to answer because i mean most of us well the people on your podcast at least they're they're, we're pretty young yeah we're pretty young and we live with our parents so in our perspective or from other people's perspective and by other people i mean other adults we don't really have any struggles because we have our parents dealing for we have our parents dealing with our struggles, you know, because if we do something bad, I mean, if you have those kinds of parents, some aren't lucky. You could just tell your parents to make it go away and they'll fight hard for it. They'll fight hard for you or for the problem to go away. But um, I say we don't we don't have any big struggles that we're struggling with or any big problems that we're struggling with because... I mean, we don't have any bills to pay. We don't have... I mean, for some of us to have jobs, we have to pay taxes. But we don't... It's not really that... You know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, But, um, yeah. I mean, we have our parents paying for our expenses, so we don't really have much of a struggle. 
What, what would you say? Well, I mean, like, if, okay, say, like, like, it might be different <clears throat> for me and DJ because we're, like, we're adults and we have jobs and stuff, but, like, what's something you think, you have, okay, like, a teenager goes through a whole set of other problems. Like, what do you think you, go, you guys go through? Like, uh, like you know, say finals or maybe, like, going through school, there's bullying, bullying mm-hmm. oh. there's trying to fit into the crowd, mm-hmm. trying, oh, trying to fit into, like, socially, <laughs> like, a clique. Something like that, like okay, I mean, oh. it, it might not say it's like yeah, a, yeah. To, our, to our standards. Yeah, it might be different than like our standards, or not yeah. like, be like mature or something like adult will go through. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, you guys still go through your own struggles. Like I remember high school, I went through my struggles, and I came out stronger from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I say like for me, like <clears throat> just like meeting the expectations of my parents. It's just hard because like I'm expected to do like really um hard yeah, that's, classes that's at definitely yeah. um school like and um i have like two jobs and it's just like sometimes like hard dealing with it and also like um i um do running start part-time but like it's just and i also want to like hang out with my friends and balance everything that's hard but okay lately like i've been like having like really hard time like just being motivated i just want to like get done with like just all these like well, since i'm a senior like since i'm about to be a senior it's just like hard because like all the pressure of like from my parents from my parents like college stuff and it's just hard dealing with it sometimes definitely yeah, yeah. I'm, i remember when i came out of high school i was terrified because Honestly, I'm alive. Mo, when I, my high school experience didn't really prepare me for certain things in life. Coming out of high school, like I didn't know how to apply for a job. I don't know how to, like you're supposed to dress for an interview, like applications and stuff like that. It was hard. Like I had no idea what I was doing when it came to like college. So I can definitely like I can see your viewpoint. Mm-hmm. But like at the same time, I learned and I became stronger yeah. because of it. And now I'm like 23 and like I know everything about college. What you're supposed to do. Like I have no, no stress over mm-hmm. it. And like, I feel like you will learn too. Like in yeah. and right now, like mm-hmm. I feel like. It's kind of like you're like leveling up, like mm-hmm. you're coming from high school, yeah. becoming an adult. So yeah. that transition is always will be tough. Yeah. Once you get the hang of it, you're yeah. like, all right, I can do this. This is easy. Yeah. You 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 yeah. like get to know the rules of the game. You'll get used to it and you get stronger yeah. from it. I mean, like I know it's just like in the moment right now because like once I get there, like it's just gonna like keep flowing. Like I'll already be in university or like college and stuff. You know. I think this is something that every like senior struggles yes, with yeah. but like i just have to get through it i want to and i'm happy honestly i like i like both of your your takes on it because the pressures that you have to go through in high school is a lot you know for me i had so much on my plate as well in high school that that was kind of my personal battle um but to touch on elijah's point the way i was raised and it was kind of it wasn't it wasn't really so my family the way they they saw things and try to deal in, with their insecurity of not being able to adequately take care of me at times was that they would try to instill in my head well you got it easier than every than other people like look and su- look at so and so and such and such you know your life can be as bad as that so you shouldn't have anything to complain about so every time like I tried, I was going through something and I tried to to make it substantial, they would throw that in my face because they were they didn't want to accept the fact that at times they were at fault. And there was a lot of people in my family that were like that. So like Elijah, what you're talking about with uh, you know, well you don't have to deal with bills, you don't have to deal with trying to make money, you don't have to deal with having kids and having the support and all that. You know, that's how I grew up. I, I grew up always thinking, well, there's always other things that can make my life worse or there's always other people that have it worse. But even then, that doesn't take away from the fact that everybody's struggle is personal and different and everybody has their own things that they're going through. Yeah, like I said, not as many people are so lucky. To have yeah. Parents. Yeah. yeah, there's some people that have it way worse than you. But at the same time, there are some people that have it way better than you. Yeah. It's it, it goes both ways. There yeah. was a lot of people that I was around. It was like, okay, there's a lot of people that have it way worse than me. But then I was looking around, I'm like, man, there's a lot of people that have it way better than me. And I don't even, sometimes I didn't feel like they deserve to have that life. But, yeah. I mean, if you keep looking at people that have it way better than you, then how are you going to get it better for yourself? Honestly, like, 
everyone's like everyone has their own like lives like everyone's different like sometimes like my parents would like compare me with like some of my friends or like or just like someone that they know that is like around my age and I'm like okay well I don't compare you guys with your friends like it's just like not fair like why would you guys just do that every you guys gotta like understand like everyone's different like not everyone's like off like they expect me to get like really really like 4.0 all the time but like yeah I that, can't always sorry. get there you know you know what I mean like yeah like the, everyone's different like, yeah like I feel like you when you when you, see, you look at other people and oh you say like how DJ was saying that oh look at them they have it way worse well I feel like yeah you should be thinking for what you got but at the same time looking at other people's problems that might be worse than yours doesn't degrade your problem you still have a problem you get me yeah. like you have a certain problem and you can't you can't just devalue it because someone else has a different like you said everybody has a different path everybody has different things going on so like i think dj was right about how saying that you have a problem and you shouldn't compare it to other people because everybody's lives are different and just because someone has it worse doesn't mean you doesn't mean your problem goes away you still have a problem yeah, and I feel like you should, someone should try to help you out and try to figure that out. I'd say, yeah, I'd say another struggle for us as teenagers is not knowing who we are. Adding on to it, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I didn't say anything. Okay, no, I didn't know your name. Oh, oh, name, oh name. my my name. name. She said her name ten minutes ago. Man. I'm so sorry. Three times. Her <laughs> name's Callie. Callie. Yeah, sorry, Callie. Oh, um, but yeah. Back. Shoot, I lost my dress. Oh, jeez. Oh, another, another struggle. You, you said, said. <laughs> no. Yeah. Another struggle you, high schoolers go through, you were saying, we're talking about. Yeah. Not knowing how yeah, to find yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, yeah, another struggle that goes on <laughs> with um, teenagers is the internal struggle, struggles. Like, thinking that you have mental illness when really that's just who you are. Like, <laughs> what? I'm like, uh, like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Are you trying, trying to say, like, okay... You're, you're not like other kids, so you're thinking that's a problem. So no. you don't have certain qualities of other kids, like say a cool No, like you seriously think... <laughs> this is this, this turn. This turned funnier than I thought it would be. Uh, you, not <laughs> funny, yeah, so, so, this doesn't make sense. So yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, saying yeah, is that you think just... somebody... So a kid has... He <laughs> starts to psych himself out to think that maybe he has a mental illness. Yeah. Or that he, oh. vice versa, he doesn't have a mental illness. When really he does. I mean, the, the I, I see what you're saying. The the whole point, and this is actually a good segue to go into part two and part two of this topic, and the, which is the topic of the day, is pretty much school and how you're able to, the, the things you like about your, your high school, because both of you go to Shorewood, right? Or you go to Shorecrest? Yeah. Okay. Represent. You said Shorewood earlier. I did not say Shorewood. Yes, you I did. Think, I, I think did. you did, yeah. You did. <laughs> you said catch me at Shorewood? Yeah. Man, you oh, no, I go to summer school at Shorewood. Uh, oh, okay. 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 So, but you're, you're so regular high school at Shorecrest. Okay. Okay. All right. Re Shorecrest represent. Yeah, so, yeah, Shorecrest, Shorecrest and Shorewood. So, I, I wanted to ask, what are the perks about going to your school? What are the things you like and don't like? And to touch on that, I know you talked about finding yourself. That's something that is going to last almost the rest your of your life. life. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. always going to be in a constant path to find yourself and who you are. High school is a really unique time because that's you're in a transition period going from, you know, you spent your entire life being a minor up until that point, and then you get to the 18th year. And then you transit. You're no longer a minor now. You transition yeah. into yeah. adulthood. You have to pay for your own school. You gotta yeah, sign up you for got your own all classes. them things you gotta worry yeah. about. So yeah. there's there's a lot. And it hits you hard, there's, man. It does. So I gotta take this because it keeps vibrating. Right. But yeah, like you know, it's transitioning from high school to college. I mean, it's a big step. Mm -hmm. You know, and it can be very overwhelming. And you because, think you know who you are at that moment, but a lot of times, not all times, but a lot, probably most times. You don't find out who you really are until you actually go out and experience the world. School, high school is so, it's, it's, it's like, like a simulation it's like encapsulated. It's not even an accurate simulation of the world. It's actually a fabricated simulation. It's everything's controlled, environmental, structured in a certain way. It's all encapsulated. It's all contained. 
once you become an adult and you really venture yeah. out to the real world, you realize, wow, yeah, the yeah. world actually works nothing like high school. Yeah. It really doesn't. There's certain things. I'm not saying you can't take anything that you learned from high school and how you grew in those times and apply it to your life later on. There's certainly a lot of things for me. But you're going to realize how different the world is once you leave high school. And you're going to be like, wow, I thought I knew what the world was like. I thought I knew myself. But really, I'm, I was just at the beginning. Yeah. So with that being said, what are some of the perks and some of the some of the things that you like and dislike about the schools that you go to? Well, I think some of the perks of going to shortcut of uh, shortcuts, I'd let's just go by pros and cons because. All right, the, hit me, hit me. All right. Pros and cons. <laughs> so, the, okay, this might sound a bit childish for the record, but um, the per the pros about going to shortcuts, I mean, it's a bigger school, bigger community, more diversity. Um, the same. No, but I know, but I've. I mean, there's a lot more. There's there's a lot less diversity at Shorewood than there is at Shorecrest. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, like at Shorecrest, you'll meet almost anyone from a different part of the world. Like, no matter even if it is just their lineage, it's still a part of them. You know, like. Oh God, I keep losing my train of thought. <laughs> but and don't hit the table now. Okay. Okay. But, um, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, Shortcrest, it's so diverse. You get to meet everyone from everywhere else, everywhere um, around the world. <laughs> Sorry. And You're all right, man. Breathe. 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 Relax. <laughs> especially people that see from your point of view how it is to be a minority. Like, you see other people that see from your point of view of being a minority and how it feels to be a minority. Well, that's, that's interesting, and I'm going to touch on a few things that you just said, but first, let me go ahead and get Callie's take on okay. the pros and cons <clears throat> and how you feel about the school that you go to. Mm-hmm. You go to Shorewood, right? Yeah. You said, okay. Um, con, I would, I would really say, like, I, it's the opposite. Like, we're not that diverse, I think, and me as a, well... I'm not saying, like, I don't feel, like, um, you know, like, connected. I, because I do connect. It's just, like, I wish that there was, like, more people around the world there, you know? Like, I would really like that. Like, there's something missing? Yeah. But, like, it's also, like, I don't know, like, it's just, it's just, like, the part of Shoreline that is Yeah, not, I mean, I know... The, you wouldn't think that, I mean, Shoreline, Shoreline, right? But you, you wouldn't think that that freeway split in Shoreline in half, but it have two schools that have such drastic differences. Demographics, because I see. yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get into the Shorewood side, it's a lot more money circulating through there. It's a lot more higher class. Yeah. Shorecrest is a lot more of the, the blue collar, Culture. blue collar type workers, you know, more little middle to, to lower class. Mm-hmm. And you could see a whole difference in that. And you see that you're seeing more of a certain type of demographic there because it's more on the richer side of town. Um, yeah, more economically beneficial. I, mean, I don't, don't want to say richer. Is, I mean, LFP, Lake Forest Park is... I mean, they're both in Shoreline, but Shorecrest yeah. has Lake Forest Park. And Lake Forest Park is a predominantly Caucasian or white. And they're really on the higher end of the thing. But I mean, it's changing. Everything's changing right now. And I feel like, yeah... Right now, the shoreline is kind of booming right now. But I feel like there's in. a lot more, like, mm-hmm. blue-collar type of workers even in Le- Le- Lake Forest Park. Because, yeah. yeah, like, I mean, if you is. compare LFP to, like, in this Arden yeah. I feel like, or Richmond Beach, it's yeah. drastically different. Well, yeah, like, LFP, LFP is kind of like old money. Yeah. yeah. You know, like old, yeah. They, they've been there. The family's been there for a long time, and people just own their property there. Shoreline's come, like, on the, it's kind of like, like the come up, you know? Like, everything's changing, you know? Uh, more prop the property is becoming more valuable and like more expensive, so it's kind of like new money coming through. I'd say it's because Richmond has a lot more houses that are built over there versus Lake Forest Park, where they have a lot more buildings. For well, you could also look at the beach. Well, houses near the beach that plays a part in it as well. Oh yeah, yeah, With yeah. The scenery. Yeah, you can go on, like you have the Richmond but, Beach on our side. It's Lake Fork Park is the Lake Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are mm-hmm. Lake Washington. Kenmore. Kenmore. Yeah, there's an airport there. There's actually mm-hmm. a water airport. It's Kenmore Air. 
And that seaplane is always leaving from there going to Seattle. I think it's I think it's drastic. So then let me talk about because you touched on some of the some of the, Callie. What are some of the pros that you see about your school though? Like just in any. What do you like about it? Yeah, like um, what do you think they do good? So I'm in leadership, and um, I really like just the people at Shorewood. It like. I actually like love going to school That's and good. um every morning I just wanna like go and like talk to people and see people mm-hmm. and just like have conversations. So like, a good the community. community yeah. A good community, yeah. And Elijah, what are some of the things that you don't like about Shortcrest? Okay, so with the diversity at Shortcrest, there's also a catch. And personally, I'd say there there are a handful of races at Shortcrest as well. I'm not gonna name them because that's this is confidential. But <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, of course yeah. not. They deserve to be named though, because the things they've done, they're pretty, they're pretty unspeakable. And well, by unspeakable, I mean like they've said some pretty messed up stuff. So, the racist side of school, they'll deliberately say the N word like straight to a black person's face. Like I had a friend that dated, um. A white woman. She was, she was a part of that racist category. I told him not to do it because she's a racist. Right when they broke up, he was sad. He was he was really sad. He was crying and everything. I felt so bad I had to help him out. But then a few weeks later, she, she went up to him. And she called him the N-word out of nowhere. And she did it again to this one black girl. Not going to name names again, like I said. And she was, she was going to get ready to fight her. But the teacher, since she didn't know what happened, stopped it. So, so is this... Wait, are you talking about what you like about short What I don't like. Oh, yeah, yeah. For you. Oh, I like racist. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, but then... Uh, okay. Sorry, I'll, that was I'll, so stupid. I'll say... Yeah, so what, do, what do you want to say? Go ahead. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, the same friend that got called the N-word, he got suspended. And now, in my opinion... Honestly, that made me so mad when I heard that. Cause did I, did this jealous. individual who gets suspended? Did his or her parents? It was it was a male, right? It was a, it was a male. Yeah. Did his parents get inv- intervene at all? Did his? Do you know if his parents went to talk to the vice principal or if they got? You know, I didn't go in that deep with it because mm. normally when a black person gets called that word, they feel really uncomfortable, and especially like you don't talk about it with other black people because. That word has a lot of history behind it. And, um, yeah, anyway, that word has so much history behind it that, um, God, I lost my train of thought again. Uh, <laughs> okay, no. You need to get this boy some coffee. <laughs> Thank you. No, but. No, I, I understand what you're saying. And you're right, that, that word does have a lot of baggage. And we're, we're running out of time right now, so we're going to have to skip part three, which is going to be the teen's choice, and kind of bring it to a close. But I do want to say one thing. I, I understand that pain and that frustration. I will say that Shorewood is a lot more diverse than y'all probably think. I went to a school. I went to two high schools. Mm. I went to a, I thought Shorewood had no diversity until I went to the second high school I went to. That had no Shorewood. I thought Shorewood. I went to Shorecrest, but I thought Shorewood had no diversity in it. I thought it was really like, man, there's a lot of one kind of demographic and so i went to the high school i went to the second high school i went to in california and i learned quick man shorewood would dwarf that school as far as diversity is concerned because that school really didn't have a whole lot of diversity really it's california exactly but the thing about california even though it's the most diverse state in the united states of america Mm -hmm. it's also the most gentrified what's gentrified mean when you take a certain economic population, which really ties into race as well, and you uh-huh. kind of border them in certain in certain areas, so like people in Beverly there. Hills. Yeah, yeah. So you keep all the rich people, yeah, the rich in people together, Hills, you keep and all you the make sure there's together. no poor people there. <laughs> That's messed up. It's it's very very gentrified. It's it's more California's more gentrified than this than Washington. Then I could say Seattle for sure. Yeah. And the school I went to, I dated a girl who was who was a, a lot lighter and the people she hung out with like to uh the, was she white yeah she was half, she was well that's the funny part is she was italian and she was italian and hawaiian 
mm-hmm. and she looked really lighter skinned. So was her. She had a twin brother. Her twin brother kicked it around the uh, the trailer park type of people, uh. and they were very very ignorant. So they started calling her names because she started messing with me because I'm black and Puerto Rican and I was a running back in school. So for me, I was kind of like a hot shot, but I was the typical stereotypical like black light skin running back. And so when she started dating me, they would give her so much lip and talk for it that it was really frustrating, you know, and then under their breath, when I'd walk by, they, they call me a certain word as well. And it was really, really frustrating because I couldn't really do too much about it. I had certain clout because of the person I was and the athlete I was at the school, but it was really, really frustrating because to be honest with you, at that age, all I wanted to do was put my hands on all of them. You know, I wanted to fight all of them, but you can't do that. You gotta be more responsible. Well, there's times where you just, you can't, when that happens, you give them power over you because whenever they want to upset you or get a rise out of you all they gotta do is say a certain word or a certain sentence boom they got you Definitely. and that's control yeah you can't let people and it's all you. about control that's how yeah. dominant groups rise and control things it's it's all about control so if they can control you mentally and emotionally then that's prop that's more powerful than controlling you physically yeah but that's not what they're thinking they think like if they say it then they're like oh crap i'm gonna get beat up so I mean, well, that, that doesn't they mean they're not. Power. That doesn't mean that they're they not. They just be fearful. They do have power though, because who's the dominant group? Think about it. Well, who got suspended uh, when, after they got called something? Who ended up getting the repercussion of it? The victim, because of that, you know. So that is a certain power that they have, and they may not be thinking about it consciously, but subconsciously that's planted. And this is with a lot of dominant groups. But like. Growing up, you guys, especially you two, you guys are about to, are you about to graduate soon? Are you a senior next year? I'm a junior. You're a junior? Well, you're about to graduate, right, Callie? And you're you're close. Mm-hmm. One thing you realize in, once you graduate, obviously you're an adult, you're, you're responsible mm-hmm. for yourself. But I feel like, you, I personally, I learned more about myself in college than I did in high school. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's a journey. I mean, uh, Sometimes you're going to go through situations in life, you're going to go through pain in life, and like, you're going to get... The short end of the stick, like it's gonna be unfair. That's what life is. But you can either react from it from a negative, a negative way, or you can react to it in a positive way. You can either you can either grow from it and become stronger from it, or you can act in a like a negative way and um, maybe certain situations be violent or situations make a bad decision and and not, it might hurt you. So I mean, so I mean it's up to you guys like what you want to do in life, and it's really your choice. And just, I'm just, you know, trying to give some good advice for you guys. Yeah, battles you know, you're going through now is going to get the massive yeah. blessings. Yeah. yeah. You got to keep finding your battles. Sometimes, yeah. like, you're just, like, I, I just actually reflected on myself. Like, whenever something, like, like, okay, basically, sometimes you just got to be the bigger, bigger person. Exactly, just, like, yes, quiet. you have to. Because. Yeah, but when you've been the bigger person for so long. You just feel like you have to well, do well, something. Well, you know, like you can, if you see something wrong happening, you can definitely stand up and say something. But make sure you do it in the right way, where you carry yourself the right way. If someone's coercing you into a fight, don't go fight them, because then you're gonna look like the bad person. But if someone is doing something wrong, you can definitely stand up for justice. Definitely stand up for somebody. You have to pick your battles. I think is the yeah. biggest thing with everything yeah. you do in life. With every battle you're going through, you have to choose your battles wisely. If you're not in a position to win a battle, it's gonna come back on you. That's one. Thing. Sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet and, and, and just suck it up, but it will do something in the long run for you. That's one thing I don't understand. Like, on the one hand, I'm willing to like stand up for my friends and like the people that you know I'm close with, but on the other hand, if people say something to me, then I'll just ignore it. Like that's, that's good. No, yeah. normally I don't. Because I want to do something about it. I just feel like I'm just going to get the backhand of it. Like, well, literally. What, what you want, what, do you want to do something meaning violently, like, respond, like, punch him in the face? Well, I don't want to, but sometimes you just... You yeah, know, you feel like it. I understand that. But sometimes, you can't. Obviously, you can't. Because then it makes, it makes you look bad. And then if you do something like that, it makes your whole race look bad. Not just you. Being a Muslim, if I do something bad, my whole entire religion and people will get blamed for it. So you have to rise up above it, and mean by doing that, meaning you have to make choices. Like if you want to make a change, go volunteer in the community, go volunteer in, in uh, um, like 
what's it called, outreach programs where you can talk to people who might not know a lot about your race or what's going on with your problems or something like that. Do it in a positive way. Don't do it in a negative way. Try to talk to your friends too. Hey, let's get together. Let's do this. Let's do that. Or you, you can uh, um, go to, uh, what's the, I don't know what they're called, but they're called like, not, it's like not interfaith thing because the interface for religion, but like a thing where uh, it's like a round table that you get together and people who have questions about like, okay, what you're going through, what your struggles are. Or like, like, like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X, they stood up for what they believed in and they did it the right way. So I'll go ahead and that'll do it tonight for the podcast. Um, I will say one last thing, just final thought. Yeah, it's you. You gotta you gotta choose you gotta choose your battles wisely. And no way am I enforcing the fact that let people step all over you, let people do things and not get away with you know, and let them get away with it. You don't want to do that. But there are a lot. There are a number of things that you could do to. Be smart about it. To yeah. to make sure that's that's not happening, but at the same time, not put yourself in a bad position. You know, it's there's a lot of ways to do it, and you're gonna learn about that as you grow older. You're gonna start to figure out what those ways are, yeah, and what that demeanor is, and what you can do. Um, that's something that's just gonna come with time as as y'all grow. La- last piece. Of Arf, go ahead and say la- your last. last piece your of last. You guys, you're in high school right now. Some you guys are struggling. Sometimes you got me hitting a rough patch, you know, you guys are not, you feel like you're going nowhere. But that struggle, that struggle is actually you growing. So take that struggle as a blessing and know that when you're going through hardships and struggles, that means you're growing and becoming a better person and just wait because your life will turn out better.